This is my TED Talk, Will There Be Life, on the movie Interstellar. In the movie Interstellar, directed by Christopher Nolan, Earth has been damaged beyond repair and humanity needs to find a new home. Throughout the course of the movie, the astronauts explore various planets in search of a befitting planet suitable for human life. So my question when researching was, can any of these planets sustain human life? The first planet astronauts visited was called Miller's Planet, named after the an astronaut who discovered it. The surface of this planet is entirely covered in shallow, knee-high water. It's the closest planet to the fictional supermassive black hole Gargantua. This close proximity makes the gravity of the planet 130% of Earth's. Being so close to the black hole also creates time dilation. Time dilation is the slowing of time as perceived by one observer compared with another. The time dilation between Miller's planet and Earth is so great that one hour on Miller's planet is equivalent to seven years back on Earth. Also due to the close proximity to the black hole, there are colossal waves. These waves are 4,000 feet high and constant and unending. So would life be sustainable on Miller's planet? The short answer is no. Not anything multicellular, multicellular could survive at least. Due to the constant, the constant shifting environment, no stable ecosystem could form. But the main reason is because of how close it is to the black hole Gargantua. Being this close would lead to extensive radiation exposure. Obviously this would not let humans live there. The second planet that the astronauts visit is called Man's Planet, also named after the scientist who discovered it. This planet also or orbits the black hole Gargantua, but it's not nearly as close. The planet is shown to be covered in ice. The surface, the surface though, was never found due to the layers of frozen clouds covering the surface. There is some water on this planet, which is a good sign, even if the water is undrinkable. Another good sign is the fact that it has an atmosphere. And while it does have an atmosphere, the air is thick with ammonia and unbreathable. And the gravity is 80% of Earth's. So would life be sustainable on man's planet? No. The temperature is far too cold for any plant life to survive. And even if the, the air were warmer, the air is toxic and the water would kill anything that tries to grow. And the final planet is Earth. Earth in 2067, to be precise. Earth, Earth in this time is completely void of all plant life. All the plants were killed because of a worldwide blight pandemic. Animals followed plants shortly after due to having no energy source. This led to a worldwide dust bowl and it endangered many young kids and old people with the risk of having lung-related illnesses. All of these factors diminish the human population to far less than 1 billion. So, would life be sustainable on this earth? No, not for long at least. Since all of the energy sources are dying and there is no suitable farmland left, the current generation won't even survive. The only solution is to find a new home. And we see this at the end of the movie when Cooper Station is built. Cooper Station is a huge space station that was constructed and sent into space in similar fashion to the Axiom in the movie WALL-E. The station holds the remaining human population and the interior of the base is meant to simulate Earth, specifically Kansas. Uh, inside the base, they replicate the climate of Kansas. This, sta this station is only a temporary solution while astronauts continue to search for more habitable planet. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.